Revenge Films. My name is Ryan. I live with my wife Jessica and our daughter Maria, who is turning five years old this year. We are a family of three, and I'm a regular full time salary man. I guess I'm more like an overtime salary man since my work is so busy that I'm always working from morning until late night, with Sunday as my only day off. However, I believe that I was doing it all for my beloved family, so I worked hard without complaining about it. The preschool that Maria goes to fosters a good relationship between the moms, and it seems like Jessica's off been going to lunch with her mom friends during the day. As a working man, it was a world I was unfamiliar with, but I believed that Jessica was doing well and enjoying her life. Then one day, I ran into one of Jessica's mom friends named Naomi, and that was when I found out about Jessica's ulterior persona. It was a sunny Sunday, and as a family, the three of us had gone to the shopping mall. Since Jessica was always working so hard to raise Maria at home, I thought it would be nice to let her do some shopping on her own, so I was playing with Maria at the arcade. Maria must have seen one of her friends because she waved at a little girl around her age and ran over to her. She told me that it was one of her friends from preschool. I walked over to say hello to the parents, but the mother had a frown across her face and a concerned look as she spoke to me. Is your wife with you today? She's here, but we're moving around separately. She's probably enjoying shopping by herself right about now. I see. Come on, now's your only chance. You should tell him. You're right. Is something the matter? My name is Naomi. I'm one of Jessica's mom friends from the preschool. Um, are you aware that Jessica's asking us to look after Maria almost every single week? What? According to Naomi, every Saturday, Jessica would ask Naomi to look after Maria and drop her off in the morning, and then disappear until late into the night. On top of that, she said that more than a number of times they would have Maria staying overnight with them. The fact that I didn't know this could only mean she was leaving Maria there while I was not at home and working. I have a lot of business trips with my job too, so those must have been the times that she was leaving Maria overnight at their house. To make matters worse, she said that Jessica often wouldn't come to prick Maria up on time as discussed, or sometimes she would go missing and not respond to messages and Naomi and her husband were starting to get frustrated. I honestly couldn't believe that Jessica was causing such an inconvenience to her mom friends behind my back, nor could I wrap my head around what this meant. For now, they asked for my contact information in case the same thing were to happen again, and I gave Naomi my phone number. I apologized to them multiple times with my head hung low, and Maria and I left the area. We found Jessica, who had just finished her shopping and was in a great mood, showing me everything she had just bought. I debated whether or not to confront her about it on the spot, but I decided to let her swim for a bit and try to gather more information first. If Jessica is secretly leaving Maria at someone else's house without telling me, it can only mean that she was up to no good. I was hurt, but more than anything, I was angry. So I just started making moves to figure out exactly what she was doing and put an end to it. The following Saturday, in between some work, I decided to stop by my own house, and as expected, Jessica and Maria were nowhere to be found. I pretended not to know anything and pretended to still be at the office as I gave Jessica a phone call. It was really rare for me to call her while I was at work, so Jessica answered the phone sounding surprised and slightly panicked. Hello? What's the matter? Is everything okay? Are you at home right now? Yes, I'm home, but Maria's taking a nap, so I can't really talk right now. What's wrong? Oh, it's nothing. It's just that I think I'll be working late again tonight, so I wanted to ask you to record the comedy show that's on at 9 p.m. tonight. Sure, I can do that. See you later. Jessica had no idea that I was actually in front of the house and confidently lied to me. At that moment, I had a gut feeling, and with almost near certainty that Jessica was having an affair. Of course, the realization that she was having an affair hit me like a boulder and I was heartbroken. But at the same time, I could feel my anger towards Jessica burning hotter and hotter inside of me. I hung up and immediately called Naomi and explained the situation to her. Naomi told me that until we could get to the bottom of this, she would be happy to look after Maria anytime Jessica asked without telling her anything. Next, I asked Naomi to please let me know immediately whenever Jessica asked her to take care of Maria. Only three days later, 
and I got a call from Naomi. She told me that Jessica asked her to watch Maria for two nights starting this upcoming Friday. I was supposed to be on a business trip this weekend, but it just so happened that my company told me earlier that day that the business trip was canceled. I hadn't told Jessica yet that the business trip was canceled, and I knew this was the perfect opportunity to get definitive proof of her affair and potentially even catch her in the act. That day, I was working overtime once again, and I got home late. By the time I got home, both Jessica and Maria were already asleep. I looked through the house laptop and checked around the paperwork cabinets, trying to see if I could find anything that could serve as proof of her affair. But as I expected, I didn't find much. I guess it wouldn't be that easy. I was just about to give up and call it a night when I had a realization. I hurried out to Jessica's car and grabbed something out of it. That was the SD card containing the footage from the drive recorder. Because there had been so many cases of reckless driving in our neighborhood, I had gotten worried and placed a drive recorder on the back of Jessica's car. Jessica wasn't very good with electronics, so anything related to the car or machinery, she had completely left in my hands. For that reason, I hadn't told her that I placed the drive recorder in the car. As soon as I slipped the SD card into the laptop and pressed play, the evidence came flowing in. Now I just had to hurry to have everything else prepared before Friday. And so Friday came around. I used holiday days to get the weekend off of work, and I pretended to leave for my business trip in the morning, but instead went to a cafe to kill time. Around 10 a.m., I headed back to the house to see the situation, and of course, Jessica's car was already gone. I hurried to get dressed and put my pre-prepared plan into play. I went to go pick Maria up from her preschool, and then I went to Naomi's house to both apologize and thank her for everything up until now. From there, I took Maria to my parents' house, and to test the situation, I gave Jessica a call. But, as expected, I couldn't get a hold of her no matter how many times I called. Two days later, Jessica had come home without a clue, and I got a call from her just past 6 p.m. or so. Hello? Hello? Where are you right now? I should be asking you the same thing. I couldn't reach you on your cell phone or the house phone these last two days. Where were you? What? You called? Did something happen? That's not important. Just tell me where you are. I took Maria back to my parents' house. At your parents' house? Then why were you answering your cell phone? I forgot my charger for two days, so my phone was dead. That's why you couldn't reach me. More importantly, I can't get into the house. I think the lock is broken. That's because my daughter and I have moved. What? Moved? Why? I know everything already, so you don't need to lie anymore. Jessica seemed panicked, but for a while she tried to play innocent. Since she refused to admit it herself, I decided to tell her everything that I knew. First, I sent her all the footage that had been found on the drive recorder. The drive recorder had saved all of Jessica and her cheating partner's conversations, crystal clear. You went on a hot springs holiday with your partner, didn't you? And you seem to get pretty carried away, huh? Saying things like your husband is on a business trip, so he'll never find out, blah, blah, blah. But guess what? I found out. Wait, no, what is this? Isn't it beautiful evidence of your affair? By the way, about the divorce papers, I sent them to your parents' house already, along with all of your belongings. That house is already up for sale, so you won't be able to get inside. You can't do this to me. What about Maria? Don't worry. I'll be raising Maria in my parents' house with their support. Oh, and of course, I'll be getting full custody of her. Wait, just wait. Let's talk about this first. Talk about this? Talk about what? I have nothing to talk about with someone who would leave their daughter with a friend to go on holiday and have an affair. We're getting a divorce, and I hope you're prepared to pay the settlement fee. A settlement fee? I don't have any money. That's impossible. And how did you even find out that I was leaving Maria with her friend? When I told Jessica about the incident at the shopping mall that led to me discovering her affair, she had nothing more to say and went silent. I've also contacted both of your parents already and explained the situation to them in detail. You're joking, right? If you do that, then there's no way I could go back to their house. Doesn't seem like you have much of a choice, so you might as well go apologize to them 
and try to talk to them about it. Anyway, I have nothing more to say to you. There's no reason for me to have to talk to you anymore. So you can discuss the settlement fee with my lawyer. Jessica finally seemed to understand the situation she was in. and She apologized over and over again while sobbing on the phone. But of course, there was no way I was going to forgive her. So I hung up the phone and left her to deal with it. After that, Jessica was avoiding signing the divorce papers. So I had to have my mother-in-law get involved to make her do it. And the divorce was finalized. Through my lawyer, I was able to collect a settlement fee from both Jessica and her cheating partner. Using the $20,000 from Jessica and the $10,000 from the partner, I was able to remodel my parents' house, and now I live happily with them and Maria. Jessica had to borrow the $20,000 from her parents, and in order to return the debt, I heard she's working multiple part-time jobs. I also found out that her cheating partner was married too and his wife found out about the affair from the settlement fee. They were apparently able to work it out and not get a divorce, but that of course meant that Jessica could never see him ever again. After losing everything, Jessica must have been sad because she would contact me every now and then, saying that she wants to see Maria. But I had no intention of letting her see her for a while after she continued to leave her own daughter to have an affair. I hope that she sits by herself, stewing in her guilt and regret. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.